So today we are going to look into the quantum mechanical treatment of uh, uh, hybridizations, various hybridizations. Okay, hybridization actually in quantum mechanics it's a linear combination of the orbitals of the same atom. So if uh, n atomic orbitals generate, n atomic orbitals are taking part in hybridization. Means if we are taking the linear combination of the n atomic orbitals of the same atom, it will result in n hybrid orbitals. Okay, and these hybrid orbitals have better directional properties compared to the atomic orbitals, and it forms uh, stronger bonds. So we are considering the sp hybridization first. sp hybridization. So sp hybridization is the combination of one s and one p orbital from the same atom. Okay. So we can take the linear combinations as psi one is equal to a one s plus b one p, where s and p are the atomic orbitals, s and p atomic orbitals. Okay, and psi two is the is the function which represents the second um, hybrid orbital or second linear combination that is a two s plus b two p. Remember that in both the linear combinations, the atomic orbitals taking part are the same. Okay, those atomic orbitals are coming from the same atom, and these. Uh, um, there are some properties to these psi 1 and psi 2 means uh, psi 1 and psi 2 are normalized both the hybrid orbital functions will be normalized and not only that psi 1 and psi 2 will be orthogonal to each other orthogonal to each other and psi 1 and psi 2 are equivalent okay these are the properties psi 1 and psi 2 are normalized psi 1 and psi 2 are orthogonal and psi 1 and psi 2 are equivalent. Now, by the consideration 1, means psi 1 and psi 2 are normalized. From the normalization condition, what is normalization conditions? Integral psi square d tau is equal to 1. From that consideration, we can prove that a1 square plus b1 square is equal to 1. And from the second equation, means equation for psi 2 we can prove that a2 square plus b2 square is equal to 1 so we have two equations here now we are going to consider take the consideration 2 that is psi 1 and psi 2 are orthogonal to each other it means that integral psi 1 psi 2 d2 is equal to 0 means uh, integral a1s plus b1p a2s into b2 p d2 is equal to 0 so we can integrate the expands expand this uh, integration and then we can write it like a1 a2 integral s square d tau plus a1 b2 integral s p d tau plus a2 b1 integral s p d tau plus integral b1 b2 integral p square d tau okay and we know that like the hybrid orbitals itself, atomic orbitals are normalized, but the atomic orbitals S and P orbitals are orthogonal to each other. Therefore, integral S square d tau is equal to 1 because S orbital itself is normalized. But integral S P d tau and integral P S d tau, these are 0 because the orbitals S and P are orthogonal to each other. And integral P square d tau will be equal to 1 because P itself is normalized. Therefore, what is remaining is only uh, only these two terms, first term and last term, because these two terms will be vanished. So, for a1, a2 into 1 plus b1, b2 into 1, that is equal to 0, okay, or a1, a2 plus b1, b2 is equal to 0. So, we have another equation now. Since S is a spherically symmetrical uh, orbitals and psi1 and psi2 are equivalent, we can write a1 square plus a2 square is equal to half, okay, because a1 square is the contribution, or s orbital contribution, a2 square represents the, uh, the other s orbital contribution to the um, uh, hybrid orbital, and both hybrid orbitals are equivalent, and then we can assume that a1 square is equal to a2 square, 
so that is equal to half therefore a1 is equal to a2 is equal to 1 divided by root 2 and from equation number 1 b1 square is equal to what is uh, from equation number 1 b1 square is equal to 1 by 2 because from equation number 1 a1 square plus b1 square is equal to 1 and a1 square itself is half therefore b1 square should be half so b1 square is equal to 1 by 2 therefore b1 is equal to 1 by root 2 and therefore we can write the expression for psi 1 because we have both a1 and b1 so psi 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 s plus 1 by root 2 p or psi 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 into s plus p okay where s and p represents the s and p orbital wave functions and from equation number 3 equation number 3 what is equation number 3 from equation number 3 a1 a2 plus b1 a b2 is equal to 0 that is equation number 3 a1 a2 plus b1 b2 is equal to 0 so we are going to substitute the value of uh, a1 uh, uh, a2 and b1 here then we can write it like half plus uh, 1 by root 2 into uh, b2 because it is a1 a2 a1 and a2 are 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 is half plus 1 by root 2 into b2 is equal to 0 therefore 1 by root 2 into b2 is equal to minus half or b2 is equal to minus 1 by root 2 ok so now we are ready to write the expression for psi 2 the next hyped orbital psi 2 is equal to 1 by root 2 s yes, minus minus 1 by root 2 p ok therefore psi 2 is equal to 1 by root 2 into s minus p now we have the expression for psi 1 and psi 2 these are the two sp hybridized orbitals ok now what we are going to do is we are going to substitute for a and p at atomic orbital functions uh, angular functions ok and uh, why we are doing this is because we want to get the directional properties of psi 1 and psi 2 so we are going to substitute for the angular functions of both the other uh, orbitals therefore psi 1 is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 divided by 4 pi this is the function for s so from this one it is obvious that s orbital is spherically symmetrical because there is no theta or phi or anything right so it is spherically symmetrical and plus root of 3 by 4 pi into cos theta that is the angular function for the p is the atomic orbital okay root of 3 by 4 pi cos theta and psi 2 is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 by root of 4 pi minus root of 3 by 4 pi cos theta okay so we can rearrange this equation what we are going to do is i am going to take 1 divided by 4 root of 4 pi as a common factor of those both uh, both the terms and both the expression for psi 1 and psi 2 okay so for psi 2 psi 1 i can write like 1 by root 2 into 1 divided by root of 4 pi root of 4 pi into 1 plus root 3 cos theta okay and uh, therefore i can write root of 4 pi psi 1 in is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 plus root 3 cos theta okay so uh, root of 4 pi psi 1 is another function that is f1 so f1 is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 plus root 3 cos theta similarly we can write f2 f2 is obtained from by obtained by rearranging psi 2 okay so f2 is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 minus root 3 cos theta so we have two functions and what is special with these functions is that these functions are, are directional because it contains the angle theta okay so uh, f1 and f2 gives the directional properties of psi1 and psi2 and now you can look into the function f1 gets its maximum when cos theta is equal to 1 right cos theta is equal to 1 when theta is equal to 0 okay the theta is equal to 0 is in the plus is a direction the angular uh, in the polar graph okay you already know the polar graph in the last semester you have learned the polar graph why we were learning the um, hydrogen atom so f1 has its maximum value when theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to 0 in the plus is a direction and f2 gets its maximum value 
when uh, cos theta is equal to minus 1, right? And cos theta is equal to minus 1 when theta is equal to pi, okay? So, f2 gets is the maximum value uh, when cos theta is equal to minus 1, that is when theta is equal to pi, and theta is equal to pi is in the minus z direction, okay? Minus z direction. Therefore, <coughs> What is this maximum value in both cases? In both cases, the maximum value is equal to uh, f1 or f2, whatever may be the case. f1 is equal to f2, that is equal to 1 divided by root 2, 1 divided by root 2 into uh, 1 plus root 3, right? 1 plus root 3. So, it will be this value in both cases when we are considering the maximum. Means when theta is equal to 0, this will be 1 plus root 3. When theta is equal to um, pi, then this function will be 1 plus root 3. Okay. So, this is the value, maximum value of f1 and f2. Both of them will have maximum value same, 1 by root 2 into 1 plus root 3. So, now we can uh, draw the polar graph. In a polar graph, we can draw, uh, draw the function of f1 and f2. Then we will get a plot like this. You can see that the f1 has its maximum value in the plus is a direction and its value in the minus is a direction is very minimum. You can see it like here, right? And f2 has its maximum value like this in the minus is a direction and it's the plus is a direction its minimum value is very less. So, the f1 is oriented along plus is a direction and the f2 is oriented along minus is a direction. This is different from the atomic orbital or for example if you are considering the p is the atomic orbital, the p is the atomic orbital is also oriented along the is, is a direction, right? Like this is a direction. This is plus is such, this is a minus is such and p is the atomic orbital look like this. And if you are looking at this p is the atomic orbital, it will have the maximum value both in the plus is a direction and also in the minus is a direction. This is a single orbital having maximum both in plus is a direction and minus is a direction. But here, in the case of the hybrid orbital, sp hybrid orbital, then that is not the case. One of the hybrid orbital will have this maximum along the plus is a direction and the next hybrid orbital will have maximum along the minus is a direction. So, these two hybrid orbitals are at, a angle, at an angle of 180 degree, 180 degree. So, if uh, sp hybrid orbitals are there being utilized in the bond formation, that uh, molecule is going to be linear. For example, if you can consider acetylene, right, C triple bond C, H, H, and in this case, the carbon atom is in the sp hybridized state, okay, and since it is in the sp hybridized state, and this molecule is linear, because it is very directional. In both the carbon, there will be two sp hybrid orbital. One of the sp hybrid orbital will be utilized for making bond with the hydrogen and the other sp hybrid orbital of the carbon will be utilized to make the bond with the other carbon. Okay, And that applies for both carbon. So, pi bond is being formed by the overlap of the unhybridized p orbitals. Okay, So, this molecule is uh, linear. Now, you understood how we can treat uh, sp hybridization quantum mechanically, how we can uh, consider it and uh, how we can predict the directional properties of the sp hybrid orbitals. And thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned.